All right. Let's get the show on the road, folks. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good deal. This is the 140th day of 2022, also known as May 20th, Steve. Well, that's right. Very good. Yeah. So thought I'd open it a little bit different than usual, but this is the Friday morning meeting. It's your all's meeting. If you have questions, make sure you bring them up to us. We'd love to hear from you. Like to give a big shout out to all those out there running up and down the highway for us. Uh, hopefully you're parked and listening to this and watching us. And uh, if you have questions too, we're on YouTube and Facebook live. So make sure you get those into Mitch and he'll get them up here to us and we'll try to answer them. So this morning, I'd like to start out. Let's go out to our some of our terminals here this morning. Let's start out east to Pittston, Pennsylvania. We have Rick out there. Hey. Troy Rich, who? Just wait, baby. Good Just morning. Wait. How's everybody? What a crew! Stand you know, you know. Every week we we ask these folks to uh, you know stand up and and, and cheer and clap and and uh, it's amazing that uh, they're that energetic this early in the morning. That is, but you're an hour later than us, so you should be a little bit more energetic than we are. You know, that, uh, <laughs> that's true. Uh, we, I, I, you know, I just want to give these guys a round of applause. You know, with, without all these these uh, these new folks that are coming in, you know. <clears throat> yeah you know that's that clap is that's all for you guys you know it's 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 you guys make this place it's it's amazing uh, that you come in here and uh uh first week and you're uh, just ready to go and uh, without all you uh this would be just be uh i don't know what it would be it would just be a breakfast it'd be a hobby <laughs> No doubt. That's some good words, man. How's everything up in Pittston this week? You know, it's, it's, it's been a great week. We had uh, about 30 PSDs, TNTs through uh, class. Uh, the pads running wide open, and uh, they're, they're working on the, the park lot across the street. They got the building uh, three-quarters of the way up. We're, uh, we're moving into shaking. That's good to hear, man. If you got any questions or anything to be brought up, make sure you let us know. Thank you. You, get, uh, you guys are awesome. Hey, so are you? Good, good words, by the way, man. That was awesome what you said. So we're your spot on, no doubt about it. So let's go out. Almost afraid to say this, but let's go out west. Let's go out to Salt Lake City, Utah. Troy, you out there, buddy? I didn't. I didn't even ask him to do that. They just. It's just a normal, natural thing. That actually happens every day in Salt Lake City. <laughs> Somehow I don't Somehow believe this, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We're so happy to be here. I think it's the elevation. It might be the problem. <laughs> We're a little light-headed out here. <laughs> yeah, the signal yeah, leads no doubt about it. So. <laughs> Good morning. How's everybody in uh, Missouri? We are doing well. well. How about yourself out there? <laughs> This is a beautiful, beautiful place to be. We got a full house. I've got tables, no chair. We got, we don't even have enough places for people to sit right now. We've got so many people out here. So we're having a great time in Salt Lake City. That's a great problem to have. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing great. Good deal. If you got any questions, anything needs to be brought up, make sure you let us know, Troy. You, you bet. Thank you very much. All right, take care. Back here in Springfield, how's everybody doing? There you go, we'll take that, no doubt about it. Good job, yeah, there we go. We fought back with a little bit there, so. I'd like to take this opportunity, if you're new here to Prime, and Rick kind of already started that, but if you're new here to Prime at all three terminals, Salt Lake, Springfield, or Pittston, if you could please stand, we'd love to give you a round of applause. Stand on up, new, all the new folks this week. Welcome to our family, the Prime family. We're a big family, and uh, you guys have gotten into a great occupation. There's no doubt about it. We need truck drivers. America needs truck drivers, bottom line. And, uh, you know, we want you all to be successful. 
It starts with safety, no doubt about it. We want you to be safe, but more importantly, we want you to be profitable too. We want you to be happy. And hopefully you all feel you're part of the family. You're entering an, an industry that is highly regulated. I hate saying that, but it is. And sometimes it seems like it just keeps getting worse, but you've already found out in orientation this week. You got physicals, you got drug tests, you got all these uh, CBTs you have to do about knowing about truck driving. You got to get your permit and some of you are getting your CDLs and all that. It is a very highly regulated industry. Once you hit the road, it continues. You can get pulled into scales. You can get stopped by enforcement. You get stopped at borders. They may want to check your load. They may want to check you out. They may want to check your truck out. They have the right to do that. And it's just, it's just what trucking is. But we appreciate every one of our operators, especially those today that are out there running up down the highways, hauling freight, so we can have this meeting because that's what really counts, picking up on time, delivering on time, and doing it safely. So thank you for joining us this week. Welcome to the Prime family. We do some a lot of fun things around here. Hopefully some of you think this may be a little bit fun, and hopefully it's educational to everybody. But uh, we've been doing these Friday morning meetings for many years here, and uh Long time ago, you kind of started that with the old cassette tapes. I don't even know if anybody, everybody knows what a cassette tape is in here, but we used to do, used to do record them and all that. So this is Steve Field. Steve's our safety director here. I'd like to introduce him and have him say a few words. Morning, Dave. Morning. You know, Dave's right. You know, we started this a long time ago. You know, my predecessor, Don Lacey, and he gave me a cassette recorder and he told me, go ahead. And now when I point to you, go ahead and touch the, the red button and the other button and, and we'd record them and then we'd get them made for our drivers. And then we thought we were pretty neat when we went to CDs, but we've left all that behind. And, you know, we have such great technology here at Prime and uh, we're very fortunate for that. We're going to talk about it a little bit today. One of our uh, one of our speakers is going to talk about technology and what we can do for you. I'd like to offer my uh, welcome to the new folks, to our veteran drivers here. Uh, uh, you know, we do these every week, and as Dave said, we like them to be informational, maybe have a little bit of fun at the same time. But, you know, again, I'll echo Dave. He stole a little bit of my thunder, but, but that's all right. You know, you're entering a great profession. You know, trucking's been good to my family, you know, virtually my whole life. And, you know, you're taking a big chance coming and joining us, joining the trucking industry. A lot of you are making a career change, and, you know, we're not going to let you down. This is a good time to enter trucking. You know, I always say, you know, don't worry about autonomous trucks or platooning. There is always going to be the need for safe truck drivers. I'm sure of that. This country, I don't think people realize until COVID came along the role of the truck driver and the responsibility that you have to keep our country going. So we appreciate each and every one of you. But again, I'll echo Dave, we've got to do it safely. We've got to be safe out there. It's so critical. Our our biggest responsibility is to make sure that you're trained and you have the equipment that we get you home safely. And just as important is that all the motorists out on the highway get home safely too. That's our responsibility as professional drivers, to drive professionally, to drive defensively, to do the right thing out there. And, and yes, accidents do happen. They're starting to come out with the statistics for last year, and, and they're not real good, the accident statistics. Uh, I'm talking nationwide. Uh, I think we'll be hearing more about that. So I'm just going to ask you to always, always keep your head in the game out there. It's so important that you stay focused on what you're doing. It's so important that you're not distracted, that you're focused on what you're doing. How would you like to be going into surgery and your doctor's going to be doing an appendectomy or something, but why he's doing it, he's looking down at his phone, you know, just kind of doing that. You wouldn't want that. And we don't want you doing that out there. We want you focused on what you're doing, and that is being a professional driver. I'm not preaching to you. I'm just telling you, it does make a difference out there. So again, you know, we're, we're, we're appreciative that you're all here, particularly our new folks that are in the industry. We're going to take care of you. I know you're going to take care of our customers. We've got a good lineup of speakers today. So just kind of enjoy your breakfast there. If you have questions, put your hands up. All of us here, we hang around after the meeting. If you have any questions that you didn't, you didn't want to ask in front of the group, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Ask them in front of the group. But if for whatever reason you don't want to, just come up and see one of us after the meeting so we can we can get you an answer to your question. So, again, welcome, and I think we're ready to go, Dave. All right. Let's talk about some safety up here. Uh, this past week, we had 138 DOT inspections. 91 of those were clean, so a 66% clean rate. Very respectable number. Yeah, give yourself a round of applause. That's a good number there. 
No doubt about it. Couple of the inspections, Joe, you, us uh, safety supervisors, which consists of Dennis Davis over here, he's a guy in a red shirt, and myself, uh, and Bill Sprague, we sign off on those inspections every week that have to be sent back to the state. And if there's violations, we got to send them back. So if you get an inspection out on the road, make sure you turn that in. If it's a clean inspection, you really want to turn it in because those are the ones you get paid on. And so if you want to make, you want to get your money, you got to turn them in. If you don't turn them in, you're not going to get paid. But uh, the violation ones we need to get written off, signed off on, make sure the violation has been taken care of or we spoke with the driver and, uh, you know, get it sent back to the state. A um, couple of them that we've been seeing more and more of that seem to occur in construction zones. And this is the time of year you're going to see more and more construction going on out on the highways. And just be prepared when you come to a construction area. First thing you need to do is slow down, reduce your speed. Um, you know, there's going to be workers there. There's going to be workers out on the road. There may be jackhammer. They may just be a few feet from your truck when you're going by. And that's how dangerous of an occupation they have. Our roads are in dire need of replacing. There's no doubt about it. And fixing bridges too, as well. So when you're out there and you see a worker, you see workers working, um, definitely slow down. Also enforcement likes to hang around those areas as well, because they're looking for speeders. They're looking for somebody going five over coming into a construction zone, they're going to stop you, especially if you're a truck. And then that, what's going to happen after that? They're going to write you up for speeding, may or may not give you a ticket. That's going to be up to the officer's discretion. Then they're going to do an inspection on you. And by then you're already behind the eight ball because you already got a violation for speeding. So they're going to be looking at something else and you're going to miss out on that clean inspection. So reduce speed, number one. Number two, increase attention, what you're paying attention to. Watch what other traffic's doing. And that's another reason to slow down. You got those people that are always heading up, trying to pass that slow truck. And there's a reason why they want to get in front of you. That's fine. Let them get in front of you. You're better off watching those crazy drivers out in front of you than worrying about them alongside you or behind you. So let them get out up in front of you. Let them go through that those, those construction zones going faster. Hopefully they get stopped instead of you. And so, you know, watch your attention. Um, increase your following distance. Definitely. Um, watch the vehicle in front of you. Make sure you got plenty of room. That distance in front of you, you can control. Um, you may not be able to control that four-wheeler that's right on five feet off your bumper, but you can control that distance out in front of you, and you don't want to have a rear-end accident. And people sometimes freak out. If you get a construction worker that's jackhammer and concrete, they see them all of a sudden. They may hit their brakes and almost stop. Well, you got to react to that. You can't hit them from behind, so you got to stay that, have that distance so you can safely slow down or, if you have to, stop as well. Also, too, be on the lookout for trucks moving out. You know, sometimes these construction workers are not paying attention like they should be. If they're driving a dump truck, they may just pull out in front of you, get out on the road, and you have to react to that. So be aware of that as well. Final thing I wanted to bring up is don't block traffic. I know that's kind of a, a thing that we sometimes you see truck drivers doing. It is frustrating. You get that BMW or that Maserati or something passing here some crazy driver trying to get in front of you cut up to get in you know get ahead of you and before they get in that construction zone you cannot block traffic you can't have another truck sit next to you in that in that left lane if you do that just gives law enforcement another reason to stop you so stay away from doing that let the crazies get up in front of you if you're getting to that point in your driving time where you're getting frustrated you're getting upset that's probably a good time to stop find a rest area find a truck stop take a little break if you have to take a little nap um, see where you're at on your clock and uh, just relax and, and get your get your thoughts back under control so you're not upset with the traffic and then hit the road again. So anything you want to add to that, brother? I think those are good words of wisdom. And they, and they weren't just words that Dave was saying. It's it, it's the it, it's the key to being safe out there. And we, we just need every driver to embrace that. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm going to have a good following distance and I'm going to drive at a speed that's appropriate for the conditions out there. And when he talks about construction, the speed limit's not the appropriate speed in a construction zone. We need to slow down. We need to give those workers room out there. We need to give workers or uh, uh, law enforcement room when they're on the side of the road, when they're on the shoulder, whether it's a highway patrolman or a record driver or someone. Those are precious people out there. And again, we have a huge responsibility and all of you are going to have that responsibility out there, perhaps more than you've ever had in your life when you're driving that truck down the road that says prime on the side. It's got our name on it. You're part of us. We're counting on you to be safe out there, to please, please, you're not distracted.
following distance and appropriate speed. Thank you, Dave. Those were good points. All right. Should we go with some speakers? Yeah. All right. Let's call up uh, first one. You know, we're so dependent on our app over here. So let's get Brianne, ask Brianne to come up. She has some updates on our app and I'd love to hear from her. Haven't heard from her in a long time. She does a wonderful job when she's up here. So trying to keep her, her queso under control. There you go. <laughs> you might come with me. Um, I'm Brianne. I work in our IT department and uh, just wanted to let everybody know we, we do have the Prime mobile app. So hopefully you have that. And if you don't, we recommend you getting it because we try to put a lot of information in there to help you out. Um, don't look at it while you're driving. Uh, but we have this my contact section. So one of the things that we get is people kind of come through the terminals is, is they want to know where their fleet manager is, where their road assist person is, maybe their payroll person. And so we have this my contact section in the app. And if you look at the individual people, it'll tell you which building they're in and which floor so, to try to help you out. Um, you can find whether they're on site or they're off site. Plus, all those phone numbers are all clickable, so you can get to all of those people. You want to know where your logs person is? All of those items, you can find all of those inside inside the My Contact section. We also recently came out with a section called My Referrals. Um, so we really appreciate if you have friends or family or people that you meet that you think would be a good fit for Prime, if you refer them here, you can earn money that way um, when they put you down as their referrer. So we, you can track all of that information. You can see how profitable it is to, to refer your friends and family and people as you come along. So we have a little section called My Referrals where you can see what you've earned this week, kind of over the last month, and the lifetime that you've been here as all the different uh, amounts that you can earn from the different people you refer. We'll give you a little more information about them so you can look up that individual person and see all the individual payments you get from referring that particular person. We also, one thing that we, we really hope that you do is keep your app up to date. We come out with a lot of new things and a lot of fixes as new models of phones come out and things like that. Um, so inside the menu, down in the settings, there's an option. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it'll tell you what version your app is. Right now we're on 3.16 for Apple and 3.16.1 if you're an Android user. Um, but we just if you'll just check your app store every once in a while and see. We try to put out information when we come out with a new version, but a lot of new phones, different things happen. So we just if you'll keep up to date on your app, you can get all the latest features and things that we put out there. And that's all I have unless you have questions. Richard and I do sit over here after the meeting. If you have any problems with your phone, you need to get signed up, things like that, come see us right after the meeting and we'll help you out. All right, good information. Yeah, round of applause. If you, if anybody have any questions on safety too, I should have asked that or any comments anybody wanted to make going on? Okay, all right. You know, I think that app, it's certainly a game changer out there. If, if you haven't got it or you're having trouble with it, please take Brianne up on her offer and, and, and see them after the meeting to get that working. Uh, I think yesterday in our, in our management meeting, I think Sean Riker and payroll, I think it was about 96% of the trips. It was a new record. It was close to 96. If not 96% of the trips were scanned on the app last week. That is incredible. And, you know, if, if years ago, when you look at how we used to do things compared to the way we do it on the app now, you, you know, you literally can deliver that trip five minutes before cutoff and have that paperwork in for payroll that week. So please embrace this technology. Uh, our, our IT folks have put a lot of effort into it. They look for feedback from you. So if you have ideas that you think may help or a suggestion, we want to hear them. Brianne wants to hear them. So it may be something that we can go ahead and do to, to uh, change the app. Remember, we had that room full of people we bring in to open up trip envelopes. I do. And that was, yeah, that was well before the app. This app has been monumental with our success and our driver's success. There's no doubt how you get paid. And, uh, you know, big kudos to Brianne and Richard and all of our IT folks here at Prime. They do a wonderful job and uh, always looking for changes to make it better. That's the thing about this, uh, our company. We're always looking to get better. We're not, we're not going to sit back and say that's good enough. Always making it look better for and easier for our drivers as well. So, absolutely, you know. And Brianne brought up a neat point on the app. Now that you can see your referrals, 
Referrals are super important to us. We, we would rather pay you to recruit someone than someone just come to us just out of the blue. And the reason for that is you've spoken with them. Maybe you've shown them your pay stub. Maybe you've talked about the places that you've seen, the opportunities that you've had working at Prime. So referrals are super, super important, and they can be pretty lucrative. So our next speaker is Jenny Tran from our recruiting department, and she's going to go ahead and talk about how referrals work a little bit. And, you know, I don't think they're really complicated, but there are certain things that you need to do to make sure that you get credit for referring someone. And then I hope Jenny will go ahead and talk about, you know, how we pay for that. And it kind of continues on as long as that driver stays with us. So go ahead, Jenny. Welcome. Yeah, we are ramping up recruiting more now than ever. So the things that we'll look at is that you have a good motor vehicle record, a good criminal background, and a stable work history. If you are looking to refer drivers, the first driver that you recruit or refer, they will you will get $100 for the first load they run. After that, you'll get $500 for if they stay for 30 days. After that, it's another $500 if they stay for six months. And then after that six month mark, you'll get a fourth cents per mile for every mile that they drive. So that's good. And then for after that, you'll get $1,000 for if three of your drivers stay for six months. So a brand new, someone, I refer someone. So I get $100 when they first start. When they, when they run their first load. When they run their first load. And then if they've been here. No, 30 get, days. 30 days, another 500. Yeah. And then six months, another 500, another 500. So $1,100. And then that recurring that you get that a fourth of a cent yeah. for every mile that they run, as long as they stay here. And as long as I'm with prime, Yeah. Mm -hmm. what's the most that, you know, just roughly what's the most referrals that a driver has out there right now? Do you know? Um, uh, I would say probably our YouTube stars and those people will probably have the most amount of referred drivers. So just having people put in an application and then make sure that they put your driver code down will ensure that you're the person that referred them. Okay, good. Do we have any questions on that? Uh, let me ask this for our new folks here. How many of you talked to a prime driver before you actually pulled the trigger? Steve, and came here? Anyone? I'll uh, add on to that real quick. Just that question that you just asked. Oh, sorry. Travis. Go ahead, Travis. I'm sorry. Travis, my name is Mitch, but yeah, Mitch, good to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so last year, our uh, top refer earned roughly $160,000 just on the referral program alone, not including their, their additional revenue for the, their actual job that they're doing. Hope everyone heard you. Now, you might be thinking, did, did I just hear his name's Mitch? I, I don't know who thought his name was Travis, but his name is Mitch. Uh, I hope you heard that and heard that right, because the number I heard was $160,000. That's unbelievable. Can you imagine that? You know, and I, and I know who Mitch is talking about there and a lot of work goes into it. And, you know, we're proud of our folks that have YouTube channels and get information out there. Some of our in, are incredible, but think of that figure, $160,000 for sharing information about Prime and convincing them that it's a good opportunity. And as you saw from Jenny, you know, it just doesn't, it's just not getting them in the door. You know, you need to coach them. You need to help them because you want them to stay till they pull that first load. So they've been here six months Then you want them to stay further. So you're generating that revenue every week off of the loads that they're running. Thank you, Mitch. So uh, how many of you talked to uh, prime folks before you came here? Many of you, some good. I, I think that's a good idea. You know, it it's important to research the company that you're going to and, uh, you know, I appreciate you talking to folks. Are there any questions for Jenny about how the referral bonus works? It's pretty straightforward. And, and don't a lot of the drivers kind of pair up with a recruiter? They Somehow they just kind of pick one and they work together? Yeah, so every driver has a recruiter. And if their recruiter is still here, then you can refer them back to them. Or if you just have a recruiter that you've clicked well with, and that works out well too. So what you might want to do is just, you know, your recruiter kind of form that relationship with them and go, I'm going to start referring folks and they can keep track of them for you. You can see them on the app right there. And, you know, it's a win win. We're, we're paying you for doing that. And then as a whole, our company's growing, which is important to us. So that's good information. We appreciate you being here, Jenny. Thank, Thank you. you. Good information right there, Steve. Real good. That's, that's 160,000. 160. Man, I'm thinking about 
<laughs> Maybe we need to take some applications to go on the weekends and start looking for drivers. That's of amazing. <laughs> you know, I mentioned on, on Thursday, we have a management meeting where we share information. And I heard something yesterday that, you know, I said, whoa, we need to do something about that. And it, it was it, it was brought up by Daryl Hopkins in our accounting department. And he kind of gave us an update on Abacus, who is our in-house kind of driver financial services firm. They're not the only game in town. Uh, they do a fantastic job for us. They've been partnered with us for a long time. The important thing is that you have someone that helps you with your taxes, that kind of guides you through those quarterly payments, making sure your taxes get paid on time. But what I heard yesterday was, and these will just be rough numbers, out of the 35 or so, 3,500 clients that Abacus has, only about a thousand got their documents and paperwork in on time to get their taxes filed on time. And, you know, we need to do something about that. So I've asked Terry Wingo and Matt from Abacus to come here and just kind of talk about this. You're, you're not going to get away from paying your taxes. We need to get it done. And we don't want to see people paying penalties. We don't want to see you get in hot water. So I'll turn it over to, to Terry and Matt here. Maybe we can get an update on where we are and what we can do to get better, Terry. Yes, thank you so much. My name is Terry Wingo and I'm with Abacus CPAs. So you're probably thinking, uh, wait, this is a safety meeting. This is an informational meeting. Why in the world would they have somebody up here talking about taxes? What does that have to do with driving at all? Well, just think about it. When you're out there driving, there's many ways to be distracted and you have things pop into your mind as you're driving and taxes and finances are usually at the top of the list because you're worrying about it, you're worried about what's going on at home, and we wanna be here to help ease that. Um, so if there's anything that we can do to help you, so everybody in the room, come on, let's all put our hands up. How many filed our taxes on time? Okay, that's not everybody, so, and we know that. We also have filed a lot of extensions for drivers, and most of you probably have already done that as well, filed your extension. And you have until October 15th to file that tax return. But let me tell you something, tax returns are not easy. They take time, and there are a lot of documents that you have to have for these tax returns. Don't wait until October 1st to start getting everything together. You need to be filing now, why? Because the extension was a f an extension to file, not an extension to pay. So if you owe on your taxes, that interest is building right now on all of those payments that you haven't made, okay? So the sooner, the better to get your tax return filed. There are a lot of documents that are required. So how many of us received the stimulus this last year? Okay, a lot of everybody's hands should be going up here. Those are documents that are required to be submitted with your tax return. There are quite a few other documents that the government sends you that you need to be keeping track of that have to go with those tax returns. That's why it takes longer to prepare those returns. So don't wait, get them in as soon as possible. Now, I know there's a lot of rumblings for drivers that have been with Abacus or with Abacus. Hey, I can't get a hold of you. I can't get a hold of you. Your phones aren't working. It's busy all the time. I leave my number. Well, we've heard you. And in the past, our phones weren't very good at all. We got a new phone system this year. We tried something new. We're trying automated ideas, just like Prime is doing constantly, updating, trying to make things so much easier for you guys. So with our phone system, you can leave your number and it'll automatically call you back next in line. So that was great. And we thought, oh yeah, well, this will work really well. Well, what we didn't anticipate is if a driver doesn't get called back within 30 minutes to an hour, remember, it takes time to go through a tax return with somebody. So if we're all on the phones, don't call in multiple times and leave your number that bogs up the system. And we weren't prepared for that. We didn't realize that would happen. And multiple drivers are leaving multiple phone numbers for us to call them back and it just kind of halted it. So working on it, we figured that out. Plus we're hiring more staff because we wanna make sure that you're taken care of timely. You guys are out on the road. You're not here in the terminal all the time. So we have to deal with you on the phone or through our portal, okay? So we have to make it accessible to you. So I need to have enough people to be able to answer your calls. That's been a problem as everybody knows, it's difficult to get employees. 
We've hired about five. We're looking for more. We have about 30 people on our ABACA staff to make sure that we're able to take care of you, okay? So back to the importance of getting your tax return filed. If it's us, if it's your CPA or accountant, find somebody that you're comfortable with that understands transportation because it's not just that easy to go to somebody and say, here, file my return. Do they know what a lumper is? If they don't, that's a red flag because that's a huge expense for you. You're paying that out, okay? Ask them other questions about transportation. If they understand what deadhead is, if they understand what drop hook is, if they understand things that you all know, they should know. If they don't, find somebody that does, okay? Because you don't want to miss those expenses. I'm going to let Matt talk about a few other things. All right, great point there, Terry. On that same note, remember, that filing extension is there for a reason. There's things that happen, life happens. Sometimes we get a little behind on our documents, we're waiting on something we can't file. Biggest thing I can let you know, especially being a lease operator, estimated payments. Get those estimates in. That way, if we go past that filing deadline, guess what, that payment deadline stays the same, but you've paid off the lion's share of that, if not all of it. So we are currently in the short quarter for the year. So we're wrapping up second quarter right now. That payment's gonna be due by January, or excuse me, by June 15th. Quarter will wrap up here at the end of the month. So get with your tax professional, CPA, accountant. If you have questions, Abacus does estimates as well. We can definitely guide you through making those payments, how much you need to be setting aside, how much you need to be paying. Remember, that's for both federal and your state authorities. Now, I see some familiar faces out there that have been through my upgrade class. Another topic I will talk about until I am blue in the face is LLCs. So lease operators, once again, get that protection. Have that LLC. Now, one trend that we've noticed a little bit, make sure just because you've got that LLC does not mean yes. your contract is currently running under that entity. So take a look at the top of your operating settlement top of your operating statement, either way, make sure you see the name of that LLC on there. Want to make sure that all of that revenue that you're generating is flowing through that business. That is crucial. Now, if you've got questions on that, if you're just not sure, success leasing, give them a call, make sure everything is squared away. Now, if you have questions as far as structuring a new business, maybe even looking to upgrade your business or make some changes, definitely, again, get with your tax professional accountant, CPA, or if you're working with Abacus, definitely give us a call, come up and see us. We will be happy to assist with that. But I cannot stress the importance enough there. With that LLC, have that protection. You're a business owner. That is your right as a business owner to have that protection of that business entity. Um, one other thing, um, just like Abac or, um, Prime has the app that they've worked on and it's a phenomenal app, Abacus has also now started an app as well. So if you're in our tax service, you can download the app and it will let you know where your return is in the process from us receiving it and if we need information from you to when it's finished, okay? We're working on it, just rolled it out now and all it has on it is that tax information, but soon we're gonna have it where you can upload your documents. You're gonna be able to get to different IRS websites if you need to make payments, things like that. It's constantly in evolving and upgrading just so we can make things easier on you. We appreciate you. You guys do a phenomenal job. Um, just really admire everything that you do. If you have questions, again, don't hesitate to call us and we'll work with you and help you out, okay? That's all I have. Any questions? Yeah. All right, thanks guys. Yeah, right, thank you. Great, good job. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Matt. You know, we try to partner with folks that, that kind of have the same values that we do, that think like we do, that realize there's no one more important than our drivers out there. And I think Abacus does that. Please take to heart what Terry and Matt are saying. Uh, it is important, everything starting with the LLC to contracting with someone to make sure your finances are taken care of. For our brand new folks in here, there's a lot going on and, and it can be overwhelming. And at some time, at sometimes you may feel like you're getting lost in this 
big, big company here. We've got these buildings, we've got these terminals. There's a lot going on here. So I'm going to ask Stan Caster Key to come up. Stan, if you'll come up for just a second. I want to make sure that Stan kind of goes through for our new folks, kind of, you know, what's available to the new folks. If they're not sure what's going on, they're, they're getting lost in the system, Stan, and, you know, you know, who should they be going to and who can help them? Sure. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's good to see everybody. Appreciate PA and Utah doing what they do, even Troy. I appreciate what he does most of the time. So it's a, it's good to see all you all this morning. So my even name is Stan Cash. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my name is Stan Cash. I work in the driver training area over at the plaza. Big place, isn't it? How many of you have gotten your steps in so far this morning? Yeah, it's a big place if you're walking from the plaza back and forth or just walking our campus here. You know, there are a lot of different people that can help you through that process. Um, when you see an associate, you probably already noticed that if you see a, an associate in the hallway, they're going to look at you and say, good morning, how are you this morning? We're not going to avoid eye contact, right? So there are so many people here that can help you, and really that's anyone who's been around. Bill Baining. Bill's back here in the security area. You can talk to them and they will help you through that process. Now, as far as new folks coming here, today we're going to do a tour of the facility. Once we're done with this meeting, those of you or anybody who wants to take a tour of the facility, uh, we're going to meet over here in this room in the corner um, and we're going to take you on a tour of the property here to uh, help you understand some of our amenities here at Prime. Um, uh, the, the salon that we have, our doctor's office that we have on site, Abacus CPA, where they're located as well. So we're going to take you around and, and show you that we're, we're very proud of what we have here at Prime um, and what you have helped build here at Prime. So we want to make sure that you know what all of our amenities here are. So Appreciate that, Stan. Any, any questions for Stan while we have him up here? Plays a key role in our you know, maybe one of our most valuable assets, that's the brand new people that are coming to Prime that we need to make sure that you're welcome, that you're respected, and that you get the treatment that you need here. So we appreciate everything you and your Thank staff you. do there, Stan. Thank you. you know, I used to watch the news a lot, but sometimes it seems anymore, it's just overwhelming. And, you know, there's a lot of bad news on there. There's so much contention and might say, where's he going with this? Well, where I'm going with this is, don't worry what's on the news. Everything is going to be okay at Prime. I promise you that. I promise you that. I'm going to ask Jim Guthrie to come up. Jim is the, the head of our reefer division, our largest division by far. And, and, <laughs> and Jim really keeps in tune with the economy, what our competitors are doing, and what's going on with the industry. So I just asked him to, to spend a few minutes with us today to kind of give us his thoughts on what's going on and you know what is Prime looking at in the future. So Jim, thank you. Okay, thanks, Steve. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's great, great to see uh, lots of new folks here. Uh, you know, we're we're committed to working hard for you to help make you successful. Uh, that's kind of the theme of, of these meetings and what we do at Prime is is everything is is done to support you all and uh, give you the chance to be successful out there. And uh, you know, Steve asked me to talk about some of these headlines you're seeing and and uh, some folks that have been in the trucking industry for quite a while maybe are are seeing some things and then then those that are coming into the trucking industry you might be seeing some things uh you know there's some uh there's a variety of opinions from uh you know economists out there but uh there's some talk about how uh you know there's a major freight recession looming uh and and what's happened the last probably two months two to three months is uh we we were in a period where there was a a, a peak in the spot market so the spot market is is a market that's outside of contractual freight and uh you know those are generally higher rates for shorter periods of time uh and uh you know that's really just a function of supply and demand and uh we've seen that last the last two months we've seen that spot market basically collapse which uh you, you might say well that that's that's not good news for the trucking industry which uh, I'd argue actually it's pretty good news for carriers like Prime because we have long uh, standing long term commitments and contractual rates and contractual capacity agreements with our customers. So we've got a core customer base that sticks with us, sticks with us even whenever uh, maybe there's a, a softening of demand in the economy. 
uh, we still have that volume. We still have that freight. We, we haul food. We haul pharmaceuticals. We haul a lot of the, you know, uh, necessary supplies for, uh, for uh, functioning society. So, uh, you know, we're going to be in great shape uh, regardless of how, you know, this marketplace evolves. What I tell you is we haven't seen a slowing down of business at all in, in our business. In, in our business. We're, we're seeing very strong demand. Uh, we're, we're not even to Memorial Day yet. Typically, we get closer to Memorial Day and we start to see a lot more demand even because, you know, people are, are having uh, uh, get togethers, having events, parties, uh, cookouts, uh, all these things that require food and beverages uh, to be stocked on the shelves. Uh, you know, that, that's whenever we start to see a pickup in our demand. So, so really, uh, between Memorial Day and July 4th is one of our, our uh, biggest demand periods. So I'd ask uh, all, of the, all of you in the reefer division to uh, consider making yourself available as many days as possible during that time period, because it's a really good time to make great money. There's going to be a lot of freight out there, a lot of demand. Uh, and so, you know, consider making yourself available as much as you can. Uh, I will say, you know, another thing to, the, uh, for our drivers to think about uh, is, is the fuel cost and the fuel programs, fuel surcharge programs, and how that all intertwines together. So uh, another headline that you've seen the last couple of weeks would be uh, record high prices for diesel fuel, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, what we see in our fleet, whenever those fuel prices increase, our net fuel cost, that's the net cost that, that you pay after fuel surcharge, uh, it decreases. So, for example, uh, uh, last week, I think our, our fleet, uh, reefer fleet net fuel cost average, this is average, so there's higher and lower, was 15 cents a mile. Okay, so that was the net cost to you after all, all uh, after the fuel surcharge and after, you know, you, you paid the price at the pump, which we get lots of discounts too. So don't, don't forget about the fuel optimization program and utilizing those discounts because I think we get better discounts than probably anybody in the industry. So that was uh, 15 cents a mile last week. Uh, this week, it's down to 13 and a half cents a mile. So that, that's a penny and a half less per mile. Uh, that that uh, you're paying net after after uh, you know you you pay the pump the uh, price of the pump and then factor in the fuel surcharge. So uh, point being here, don't let don't focus on the record high uh, cost at the pump. Focus on your driving habits, how you purchase fuel, how you use your fuel, because this is an opportunity when those prices go up with our fuel surcharge mechanism. It's an opportunity for folks doing it r running the right way, you know, to make even more money. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Watch, uh, you know, don't don't focus again on the on the record cost of fuel. Focus on on what you're spending net. And uh, you know, again, it's really important to utilize that fuel optimization. Uh, it's a powerful tool for you. Uh, we invest a lot into it. We we have a great. Uh, fuel purchase program and our fuel discounts are, are second to none. So, um, you know, one more thing I, I want to touch on before I, I give up the mic, uh, you, you know, it's really important for all of our drivers in the reefer division to uh, take care of some fundamental things with every load. And one of those is closely examining the bill of lading uh, and, and examining the destination, the, all the load information, PO numbers, make sure it all, all matches what's in the computer. You know, a lot of times we don't have a full amount of information from the customer at the time they tender the load to us. So, uh, you know, there's, there's a Springfield, Illinois, there's a Springfield, Missouri, and there's some other Springfields. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, uh, there can be human error or there can be uh, you know, error from uh, from the information that we get through the system uh, electronically that that sends you to the wrong destination. But the bill of lading is the legal binding document. You know, another very important aspect on the reefer division is the temperatures. We don't know the temperature for many of the loads that we haul at the time that we get the tender. So that bill of lading is the legal binding document. It's very important to check the temperature on the bill of lading. Uh, you know, we have. Uh, an example last week where someone didn't check that temperature and ran a, um, a load that was supposed to be at minus 10 at 28 degrees. And so those can be extremely costly mistakes. 
again, we, we want uh, to support you and help give you every tool to be successful. It's just very important for you to check those bill of ladings at the time that you pick up your loads. Um, okay, anybody have questions for me that I can answer while I'm up here? You're let, you you uh, clapped for me before I even st spoke, and, and now you're letting me off very easy. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Hey, it's great to see everybody here. Thank you. Everybody be safe. Appreciate it. Well, I feel a lot better now hearing from Jim, and everything's going to be all right. And it truly is. It truly is. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're at a fantastic company. Yeah, we have our disagreements in the country as a whole, but we're going to be all right. We're all going to work together, and no matter what the at, no matter what's thrown at us, we're going to get through it. These meetings aren't rehearsed, and sometimes we try things. Sometimes they go well. Sometimes they don't. So I'm just going to randomly pick someone. Dennis is smiling because last time Dennis did it, the wheels came off. But I know they're not going to. So I'm seeing someone. I'm going to say you, sir. Could you come on up for just a second? Man, oh man, here we go. All right. <laughs> You need a mic, but <laughs> we want to get to know you a little bit. So you got your badge, Raymond. Uh, in 30 seconds, tell us about Raymond, who you are, where you're from, how you got the prime. Um, from Columbus, Ohio, just to work at Honda. Uh, they started slowing down. So I wanted a career change and a buddy had mentioned prime to me and I signed up and here I am. And does your buddy drive here? No, he's in Florida. Okay. Well, we can hire drivers from Florida, so that's all right. So how far have you got? Is this your first week? Yes. Okay. So you got your, probably got your permit before you came. Mm -hmm. Okay. Took your physical drug test. So you're going through orientation now. Uh, what are your thoughts? You know, just, you know, this is a lot, this is overwhelming today. I know there's a lot of information, but you know, Dave and I said, oh, that guy looks like he's really in tune. So that's why I called you up, Raymond. You know, what are you taking away from the meeting? Um, very informational. Uh, everybody seemed friendly, uh, like family. So, you think people are willing to help you if, if you have an issue? Yeah. Okay. Of course. Okay. Well, I think they probably are. So we're running a little bit ahead here today. So I'm going to do something that I do, you know, on occasion. You know, if you need help, you can come see me. Right. You can see Dennis back there. He works in the state of our bills and security. You know, but everyone here at Prime is in tune. So I want to introduce you to someone. And if you have trouble and you know, you're not getting the answer, don't hesitate to say, hey, I need a little bit of help, okay? Great, Robert, come on up. I'm gonna introduce you to Robert Lowe. Robert started this company in 1970. Here he is today, 52 years later. Robert, this is Raymond. Hey, Raymond. Nice to meet you. you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. So there you go. You got one more name, you got one more face if you need anything, Raymond, because we want to make sure, we have got to make sure you succeed. It's, it's critical to us at Prime that you succeed, okay? Sounds good. Man. All right. Appreciate you coming up, Raymond. I'm going to go ahead and give the mic here to Robert. I did forget one thing, and I apologize. I'm going to make it right. If you served in the armed forces, as Robert and I did, would you please stand so we can recognize you this morning? It's all yours, Robert. Hey, thanks, Steve. Raymond touched on some, some issues there that are I mean, I, I'm so gratified to hear. I mean, he's he's hearing the right things. You know, we talk, he talked, he mentioned family. He mentioned, you know, friendly greetings. You know, we figured out it don't cost any more to be nice than it does to be ugly. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, why not be nice? It's easy. And I tell you what, it makes you a lot of money over time treating people right, treating people nicely as opposed to being mean. So... You know, one of the basic themes here at Prime is to treat our drivers with respect. It's a simple thing, right? It's a simple thing, but it's so hard to find out there in the world sometimes. Truck drivers make tremendous sacrifices, you know, to feed this country, keep products on the shelves. And the very least we can do is treat them with respect. I'm talking about all drivers but especially and obviously the folks here at Prime, the Prime drivers. So whether it's in dispatch or safety or wherever it is, I mean, that's a basic tenant, a basic tenant of this company is to treat our drivers, well, to treat all our associates respectfully, but especially, most especially our drivers because it's, it's woeful out there in the real world. I mean, society doesn't understand 
what you all do. We do. We do. And you are family now. And Rain, if you run off, I'm going to come fetch you from Columbus, Ohio. I, I, I know the general area where you are, so I'm going to come looking for you. We, we want you here. We want you here. Um, you know, Jim outlined business is good. We're in a sweet spot right now, like you wouldn't believe. You know, we're we're keeping our folks loaded and moving and making money. You know, we have this uh, this fuel thing under control. Don't be afraid of fuel going up if you're if you're pulling for prime, because you know we have got a program that is protecting you. In fact, if you get better than seven miles a gallon, and most of our drivers do on average. I don't know where we are, you know, like eight and a half, something like that. You're making money every time it goes up. And that's, I hope no customers are listening this morning because I'll really piss them off. <clears throat> but you're actually making more money. Daryl, am I right? He claims to be a CPA, so we ought to know numbers. I haven't checked out his diploma lately, but now he's, Daryl's a really smart guy. And, and what he says is, is right on. So, you know, get good fuel, get be fuel efficient, you know, get that uh, miles per gallon up there and, you know, follow <clears throat> your fuel recommendations and you will make out on this fuel thing. Um, you know, I, I'm not used to having this much time. So uh, if there are any questions, I'll be glad to. Willie Bill. Oh, no, he. I hate it when he asks me a question because he always asks hard questions. Yeah, I got a real tough one for you, boss. Okay. What do you think of the Derby? <laughs> I tell you what I think. I wish I'd have had a thousand dollars on the nose of that horse at, at age of one. I'd be a I'd be a rich man right now. I'm telling you. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, it, it's pretty pretty exciting. Folks. It's a super opportunity. If anyone's got a question for Robert, you know, don't hold back. I think you're going to get off easy, Robert. Yeah, you you all are being kind to me. You feel sorry for the old guy up here this morning, and I appreciate it. Folks, <laughs> no, I, I do appreciate you. I thank you for what you do. I thank you for being here at Prime. If I can help you in any way, let me know. God bless each of you, and please be safe. Yeah, we'll let you fix it.